Hello. I'm going to teach you how to do resin studs today. I've already done a mixture here of resin. It's one part and one part. So it just depends on what type of resin you're using. I really like this resin. I just recently started using it, but it comes in a really big tub compared to my little ones. I used to use these and they're really little. I do a lot of resin projects. I share, I sell them in craft shows. You just have to mix it up really well. You'll see bubbles right now, but they'll come out. You want to do it till it's not cloudy anymore. Everyone will tell you a different time. I just do it until it's not cloudy or streaky looking when you're stirring it. The more resin you have, the longer it's going to take to mix it up. Sometimes I just do a little tiny batch. This um, is actually a whole six ounces of resin at once. But I'm going to be doing a lot of molds today because I just had a craft sale yesterday and I sold a lot of my jewelry and my, I need to make more keychains as well because I have another craft show coming up this weekend. So I'm just making sure it's almost ready. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to separate this resin that I've mixed into little containers and add some mica powder to it, which is going to color it. And I'm going to show you the mica powder I use. It just comes in little baggies and it lasts forever because you just need a little bit of it in each container. So I think this is ready. Okay, so let's see. Here's what we'll do. These are so cool. They're actually made of silicon. So, I'm just gonna pour some in here. And I have four of these. I'm gonna go ahead and pour my resin in each of those. And each of these is gonna be a different color I'm gonna use for my studs. I got some resin. I'm old. One second. There's some things I keep on hand when I'm doing resin. Q-tips is one of them. Popsicle sticks for stirring and other things. And I also keep on hand these amazing little droppers. And if this will give you an idea of how little these are, these molds, they're really hard to pour in. So I actually use these to put my resin in this. It'll make a little bubble. You can pop it by running a toothpick around it or using a lighter and I'll show you how to do that. But these droppers are amazing. Let me get the rest of that resin out so it won't look weird in the end. The only thing with your Q-tips you wanna make sure you're not leaving any bit of the Q-tip in there. Hi, and then that. Okay. Got that cleaned up, so I'm going to continue pouring in the resin into these containers. I have two more. Probably gonna need more than four collars, but I only have four of these silicone containers. So we'll just do this for now, and then we'll come back to it when we need to. My first collar, I'm gonna need green. I need it for my leaves and the leaves of the pineapple. I think that's all I need green for, possibly. But I'm gonna mix that in to one of these containers. So what you do, take your container, and it just takes a tiny little bit. Be careful not to put too, too much. I 
and I'll stir it up. The more mica powder you put in, the more solid of a color you're gonna get. The less mica powder you put in, it almost makes it like kind of translucent. So you'll have some color, but you can still see through. And the reason that's important, you don't want to see through stud because you will actually be able to see the back that you're going to put on at the end. So you need to make your studs a more solid color. I made that mistake when I was first starting out. And I ruined a whole batch of my studs because you could actually see the little metal piece in the back and it didn't look very good. So you definitely want to make it solid. And I kind of like leaving it like this. It has um, almost a dimensional effect to it. It's not one complete green color and it gives it a cool look. So. Here's what's gonna happen. I know this has a little pore spout on it, but these are too tiny. I'm gonna get a dropper. It's way less messy when you're working with such a tiny mold. And I just squeeze it, I put it in, and I get as much resin as I can in there. And the resin is thick, so it's going to take a minute. Now, I'm gonna do these first. I actually wanna do a couple of them just plain green. And then I wanna add glitter to this green resin. And some of the leaves will have a glitter green to it. And I think that's really pretty too. So a silicone mold will move. And if you have to, you're gonna to have to force that resin into those little divots. That's another reason I love the dropper. You can get an air bubble in there. So you want to make sure you're working around it and making sure you're not going to have any air bubbles. When the resin dries and there was an air bubble in it, it'll actually have a hole. So that's why it's important not to have air bubbles with this type of mold. Um, and other types of resin, you'll literally just see the air bubble inside of it. But with this, it'll actually make a hole in your stud. You can't sell that. It looks weird. Okay. I'm just forcing the resin into those little divots. Okay, I think those are good. Another important thing about studs, you don't really want to underfill your mold. You wanna make sure you have enough. Okay, so I have this shiny green glitter. Glitter is messy and I will warn you, it will get on your molds. and stay for a while, unless you clean it with alcohol. So what I do when I'm done and I've already demolded all the earrings from the molds, I will go in with some alcohol, just rubbing alcohol. This is actually what I use. And I spray it right on the mold and use a paper towel to gently wipe it off. And that's the best way I've found to get it cleaned off because it sticks on it real good. For some reason, the glitter loves to stay on the molds. So this is making a really pretty, just makes it a little bit extra. It's, it's really nice. So here is what it looks like with the glitter in it. Makes it sparkle. And I have a little bit of left in this I'm going to put that back in and stir it up. There we go. Then I'm going to get some more in here. I'm going to make the rest of my leaves glitter green.
and there's just a slight difference, but I think the glitter is fun. See how it doesn't want to go in that slot? There it went. When I'm done with this, it actually will probably be done to demold in six to eight hours. But I like to wait a day just to make sure. Because if you demold it six to eight hours, especially if you don't have a good resin, it's it could ruin it. Um, they're going to still be soft. Or pliable, not necessarily soft. But I like to wait a day, at least, to demold them. Another thing I love about these studs is that they take so little resin that they're very cost effective to sell with. Um, if you're doing a bigger project like a coaster, they're going to be using a lot more resin in you can't make a, as good a profit off of something like that because resin can get expensive. There's some bubbles. And I'm making sure, you can tell if it's not all the way to the top. It almost looks like it's indented just slightly. You wanna make sure you get it filled to the top, but not so much that it's gonna get out of the mold. It looks good. Once it all settles down in there, it's gonna look really good. Okay, I'm gonna take a break from the green because I'm gonna need it with this pineapple, but first I need to mix up some yellow. It actually looks like, yeah, when I was doing that earlier, I must've got some of my pineapple too. Okay, let me just get that out of there real quick. I don't normally mix resin over my molds. I was just doing that for the video's sake. Don't mix resin over your molds. <laughs> Learn from me. Okay, there's that. Now I need to find my yellow and we're going to go ahead and mix up that. Okay, I told you I would show you what mica powder I'm using. You get 24 colors of these bags. It says soap dye, but you can use it in resin. Um, and it's um, natural mica powder and it has like a shimmering to it, which makes it really pretty. So this is the yellow gold and that's what I'm going to be using for the pineapple. Mm. I also have some flower molds that you can't necessarily see. They're really cute. I have four sets of these. I can use the yellow for those. So I'm going to do a little bit of this yellow in this one. Try not to dump a bunch in. made a mess when I was pouring the yellow mica in. Cleaned that up really quickly and what I'm gonna do now is just put a little bit of this glitter in. This is actually like a yellow gold glitter. I'm going to add it right into the yellow pigment. It'll be pretty. That looks good. So now, this is fun. I'm going to take one of the droppers and put it in the yellow. Get enough of it in there. Do the same thing with my green. To do my pineapples, 
I like to have the yellow bottom and the green top. But to do that, you have to have these both ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put the yellow here, just like that. I love these pineapple molds, they're so fun. Whenever someone sees them, they're like, pineapples, they get so excited. These uh, teal colored molds I found on Etsy. There is a seller that makes her own silicone molds, which I think is really neat. Okay, now here is the fun part. You add your green while the yellow is still wet and you'll get it like kind of mixed in the middle but it makes a really neat effect. The tricky part about this one is there's a lot of little divots for the pineapple and you have to make sure those get filled up. That's an air bubble I'm trying to get out. Again, making sure that the molds are not underfilled. This one's a little overfilled. To do that, you just kind of suck some of it out. Which is another thing I love about the droppers. If you get a little too much around that's leaking out, just use your Q-tip and do that. How cute are those? I love them so much. Okay, so I still have some green and some yellow left. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have these nice alphabet molds and I use these for bracelets. I'm gonna move you over. I use these for making bracelets. I'm going to fill some of those up with green and yellow, and I'm going to mix them similar to the process we used for the pineapple, except we're going to get a little bit more crazy. So we're going to go, okay, I'll do polka dot type thing here, putting things here and there. Oh, I don't know why I did the U. There's not a lot of people that start with U, but I did it. Um, I have a capital letter and a lowercase letter of these. And I'll just do this so, so you can see what I'm doing. So, put it like that. Make sure that's not dripping on anything. Oh, don't put it on the pineapple. Here. Okay. And I don't know if you can see underneath all of my molds, that blue mat is a silicone mat. You definitely want to be working on a silicone mat because once the resin dries, it's, you're not going to get it off unless you like sand it off and it's not fun. So just get some sort of silicone mat to work on. Okay, so now I'm going to be putting these, see how easy you can do that with the dropper? Look how neat that is. So now you have some green and yellow letters. They're cute. I make these into charms and put them on a charm bracelet so they'd be like an initial bracelet with some charms on them. All right. Just sort of putting it in there, any holes that are there. I might've put too much in that one. Oh no, look, I waited too long to do these. Just put it to the bottom and kind of do that. Okay. 
I might have to get some of that out. They're fun. Okay. I'm going to continue filling these and then I'll come back. I got from black and white and stuff, and I'm just going to go ahead and let you watch me work. This is the cows right here in the MRI, favorite mold. I love them. Um, I will show you how I do them. Let me get some of those in this. It's the mold of pineapple. So let's go ahead and show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the mold of
I'm going to show you how to put the backs on these stud earrings. I have this UV resin. It actually comes in 500 grams. It's a pretty big bottle. And I'm going to just put a little bit right here. This is the fastest way I've learned how to do this. I've got the earring backs ready for these roosters. I'm gonna dip it in. You just need a little bit. You're gonna put them right on there where they go. They are gonna scoot around slightly, but that's okay. Just move them back to where they need to be. If you're working in a place by a window, like me, they could start drying on you a little sooner because um, the sunlight's gonna be hitting them. So make sure you're keeping an eye on them so they don't have a back get really out of place. Once you have them like that, I'm gonna take my UV light and hit them like this just to stabilize them. And this is going to let me work with them to cover the rest of the back with the UV resin. Maybe a half second to a minute. Okay, I had those under the UV light for a minute. I'm gonna show you something really quick. I have my UV light set up right here. And that's where I'm going to be putting these when I'm done. I'm gonna be putting them right under the UV light. Have it ready. I'm gonna pour out some more resin. And hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Here's my earring. I'm gonna take the Q-tip. And I'm going to put it right on the whole back of the earring. You have to work quickly and you're kind of doing a doming effect on the back of the earring. What this is going to do is it's going to make sure that back is not going to go anywhere. You're putting it on the back, you're making it look even, you're making it look cohesive and nice. Then I'm putting it under the UV light and I'll show you again. You just cover the whole back with a UV resin. The best way I found to do this is with the toothpick. But if you have a better way, please let me know in the comments below. The most important part is to make sure you get it on the back and all the edges of the back. Another thing I want to point out is I got this pack of backs from Amazon and it comes with the little either the metal or the little plastic ones to put on the back of them now they come in five different sizes and I want to tell you why that's important so here on the butterflies and the mom studs that is the very smallest back that you can get because that's the only one that'll fit on the back then this one the leaves and the unicorns I can go a size up on those and then sometimes even for instance these cats, that is the almost the largest size. So it just depends on what type of stud that you have. You're gonna need a different size back. Keep that in mind when you're doing these studs. Here are the finished and packaged studs. I sell them three in a pack and I mix and match them. They turned out so cute. In the middle of the mom studs, I put a little bit of resin. It makes a heart. It's so cute. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like this, please press subscribe.